All right. It was really good. How are you doing, Mike? Doing really well. How are you doing? Oh, like a rock star. Just like a rock star yeah. with, with not a lot of sleep, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I figure that goes hand in hand. But everything's going really good. We're we're really uh we're really impressed with a lot of the teams, a lot of the agents across the world and we're just seeing uh we're seeing some really cool stuff. So it's really as difficult as we are working through this, it's actually kind of cool to see us pivoting our biz businesses and new lead generation stuff, new ways to service our clients and I think we're going to look back at this in a couple of years and or even a year from now and go see some really big changes about how uh realtors have done their business. So I think it's going to be for exciting. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a huge, uh, huge opportunity for those that keep working. I think it is. And it's an opportunity for us as real estate agents to actually show the public that, you know, we have two choices. You know, a lot of small business owners can't help right now because of their business models. But in real estate, we actually can help. And there's a lot of people who are scared and uncertain right now. So it's kind of cool to see our industry say, look, you know what, everybody questions, you know, our commission and what we're worth and all that kind of stuff. And I think this is a really good time for us as, as real estate agents to stand up and say, you know, those of us who are really committed to our clients and to the public and stuff and to say, hey, here's where we are. We're not hiding. We're here. We're going to still help you. We're going to service you. So it's actually kind of exciting to um, to kind of see. So I like it. I don't like what we're going through, but I like the fact that I'm seeing so many amazing agents step up to the plate and go, you know what? We're here. We're hunkering down. So that's cool, right? So I like it. I like it. All right, guys, it's nine o'clock. So enough small talk. I've got Mike Johnson on the call right now. So I'm just going to introduce him and then we're going to roll right into this because uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover and we've got a lot of people who have just logged in. Um, we increased the lines, so we should be um, hitting that 700. I apologize if anybody has people who can't get in. Yesterday, I got a few uh, messages saying the line was at capacity, so these calls will be posted <clears throat> to our Facebook page as well, which is really great. Um, that's a place where you guys can go back, listen to this 100 times, and go through it. So I just want to give you guys a really quick, um, you know, kind of bragging right about why I picked Mike to be on this call. Mike is one of my most impressive people that, that I love working with. I love watching how he's developed over the last few years. Uh, one of the things about Mike is that he is probably the only person I know that nails cold calling for listing appointments. Um, I really haven't seen very many people as a coach, and that's a big testament. I haven't seen many people who have built business models on it. I haven't seen many people who have had huge success rates with cold calling because a lot of people um, have different strategies or they're not as committed as Mike has been to it. So that's why I brought Mike on the call. He's absolutely amazing at being on the phone. In some cases, I've seen him as most recently he guided his team to getting 18 listing appointments um, on the phone, <laughs> literally by phone method. And it's nothing unusual if Mike was to come to me and say, you know what, that he did eight listing appointments all by cold calling, like got them through cold calling, and then it's not saying surprise to, for Mike to take double digits listings in a month. Um, and Mike is not in a market, by the way. <laughs> where it's easy to cold call, nor is he in a market. He's in Canada. So just to tell you, it's very hard to operate a cold calling business in Canada. And it's even harder um, because we're such a multicultural uh, society. It's very difficult also for him to have a lot of success in it. So the truth is, Mike, you've blown me away with your cold calling skills. And in a time like this, I want agents to hear the best of the best. So we've got an agenda. So everybody, welcome Mike to the call. Yay! Thank you so much for the intro. Uh, I could go on and on and on and on about you, but uh, I think people will hear the questions and answers and they'll be impressed with just what they hear. So <laughs> let's let them hear for themselves. All right. So let's take a look here. Questions that we want to ask you. First question, why cold calling? Why have you chosen that as your business model? I want to hear a little bit about your mindset around cold calling. Mm, so when I first got in the business, I guess, in Hamilton, at least, the, the one person I heard a lot about was Mark Loeffler. At that time, he was probably one of the biggest agents in the city, and that, that's what he did. So I thought if it works for Mark, it works for me. Um, so I dove in, and after I thought about it for a little while, I started to think this is the best way to speak to the highest volume, volume of people on a daily basis. If I was to go out and knock on doors, maybe I'd be able to build deeper relationships, but there's no way I'd be able to speak to as many people. Um, mm -hmm. And it just made sense to me that uh, the more 
people I speak to, the more houses I'm going to sell. And now 100%. when I look back on it, I, I really believe that my sales at the end of the year are direct direct reflection of the number of people I speak to on a daily 100%. basis. 100%. And how many listings, just, just to share with the audience here, what is your listings taken goal for this year? So I'd say about 70. Right. So about 70. So guys, this is, this is amazing. Okay. So, and we're going to, we're going to script out a few things just so you can hear it. Um, so Mike, just warming you up a little bit here. What's the, what do you find is the biggest reason why realtors, especially ones on this call, um, don't like cold calling? And how do you deal with that? Because Mike also runs a team as well of uh, agents. Who He's the vice president of sales as well for one of my favorite teams, the Sandy McKay's team at MRN. Um, so my question to you is, is that what do you think is the biggest objection or obstacle of why realtors aren't cold calling? So I would say the biggest thing is probably boredom. But for, for any of us that have taken bold, my favorite quote that uh, I've ever heard of bold is, there's millions in the mundane. And I, I was fortunate enough to take bold before I was even in the industry. So as soon as I heard that, I thought, great. If I can, if I can sit at the office every day and maybe be bored and just put in this activity over and over and over again, um, I'm going to make millions of dollars over the long term. Um, as soon as I heard that, I was totally fine. Um, if I'm getting paid, I'm, I'm cool being bored every day. Um, <laughs> Okay, so so I will be honest with you. I hear it all the time, guys. People, um, a lot of the times, there's two things that I hear as a coach. I hear that it is boredom, so people get very bored cold calling. And I do want to point that out, guys, is cold calling can be extremely bored. I mean, you have to have a very thick skin as well. So I have two things that I, I struggle with when I'm coaching people, and they're saying, I don't want to cold call. And the first thing is, is they don't they don't like the boredom. Okay, so again, um, that it can be slightly boring, but it can also, again, like Mike is saying, if you can reach a high number of calls and you can actually really have some great results over it, you know, which do you want? Like, you know, is it really that, you know, to me, I don't think it's that big of a deal um, to be a little bit bored. The second thing that I hear quite often is people don't like the rejection. Um, the rejection is very difficult for some people. They take it very personally. So Mike, when you get those calls, like what percentage would you say of your calls do you have people who are super rude to you? And you do it all the time, so I'm kind of curious. What percentage? So my, my goal is to always speak to 100 people a day. So I kind of have a rule for myself. If I don't talk to 100 people, I don't go home. Um, and of those 100 people, I'll normally add three to the database and book over the course of a week. So over 500 conversations, I'll normally get two appointments. Okay, two that. appointments. So, Got it. Everyone else is telling me how horrible my mother is. They're telling me to, I won't even say what they're telling me to do. Um, my favorite one, people telling me to go get a real job. And in the back of my head, I'm just thinking how much money I'm making doing this. And thinking, I don't want a real job. I want to do what I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but it's true, right? So, guys, like, yeah. what you're hearing is, like, Mike gets kicked kicked in the teeth a lot. Like, he gets kicked in the teeth a lot. So, like, you're not taking this personally, right? Like, that's what I'm hearing. You're just not taking it personally. No, it's kind of like, um, well, you would know better than I would. You're you're doing your triathlons and your Ironman. So, yep. I imagine the first time you went out and trained the next day, you probably felt horrible. Yep. But the next workout the next day was a little bit easier and now i'm sure you're still sore but not nearly as sore as you were when you started training sometimes 100%. people say things to me and yeah it gets in my head a little bit but my brain is now way more callous than it was when i first started doing this and I, I, over like time the, you become more and more numb to it you really do <laughs> It's a mindset, right? Like, I love what Mike's saying. He's like, it's a mindset thing. And I'll be honest with you, he's 100% right. Like, if you if you are looking at cold, cold calling is a mindset game. That's what you really want to look at in any business, whether you're a small business, whether you're a large business, it doesn't really matter. If you're going to be on the phone, you got to be prepared. And what I want you guys to remember is it's never about you. And I'm always saying this is that Mike's right. Like when it comes to training and triathlon stuff and things like that, you've got good days, you've got bad days, your body is being pushed through. Um, I'll, you know, great example. Normally I work at 16 hours a week um, for our Ironman training. Now we have our pools closed, our gyms are closed, everything is closed. 
And we're under, you know, as a business owner myself, we're under the gun. So I'm working till four o'clock in the morning and all that kind of stuff. So it's a complete mindset thing. How do I choose to see what we're going through? Do I choose to see it as, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do 16 hours a week. I went for a run yesterday. It was really hard. I just did 10K. Normally, 10K is like nothing. I can hammer out 10K and go, ah, that was easy. Yesterday, it was really hard. So I had to battle my mindset. I had to really push myself out there and go, I got to do this. I, you know, it's not going to feel good. It's not going to be the greatest. But today is going to be a really difficult day. Um, when I was out running, a couple people give you bad looks. They do this, that. Like, it's just what it is, right? So you have to have that strong mindset. I love cold calling. Anybody who knows me knows I'm on the phone all the time. I love cold calling. Um, and I'm like Mike. I don't really have an issue. If somebody, if somebody tells me that I'm the most terrible person in the world, you know, I got to kind of take that with a grain of salt and just kind of let it go. So we have a little bit of fun with it, guys, just so you know. Um, if you're running a big team and you really, and your team's not used to cold calling, this is going to be one of the hardest things for them to get over is to be told, especially at this time, that they're the most terrible people in the world. So you really just want to have some fun and be like, guys, put up a board. And be like, put put up some challenges and be like, how we do it, and then, you know, it's kind of funny, is that we've always, when we do dialing for dollars and things like that, we have some contests. So run a dialing for dollars contest with your team, put up a board, a virtual board for everybody, get everybody on Zoom, and kind of like update so you can see everybody cold calling. And then just be like, if somebody tell you know, if for somebody using a swear word, you get one point. If you get hung up on, there's another point. So have a point system, guys, and kind of like just teach your team and yourself to be like, look, you know what, if, if you get five FUs in a day, okay, well, guess what? That means, you know what, when the, you know, we're going to send you a virtual five, $5 Starbucks card. Like have some fun with it. Don't be so, so literal about it. And I'll always just to add on to what Mike said is that when um, – I got a cold call from a realtor a long time ago before I was even in real estate. And I will never forget this. And this is a really kind of interesting example is that it was the morning of my mom's funeral. And I, I was young. I mean, it, I didn't really have a lot of um, filters for sure that day. And I picked up a phone thinking it was a family member calling for information about the funeral or how to get there or somebody was late. I picked up the phone and it was a real estate agent cold calling me. I'm just going to fast forward and say it was the things I said to that poor realtor. I'll never know who that realtor was. One day, if I share the story enough, I'm really hoping that that realtor says, uh, that was me and you were, <laughs> you were really mean. Um, but the point is, is that I was terrible. I must have said some of the worst things in the world to that real estate agent. And I don't know, like the real estate agent was just speechless. And then I hung up. And I remember thinking back going, Man, it was really, I, I, it had nothing to do with the real estate agent. I was under a massive amount of stress. It was a really obviously terrible timing, but the realtor didn't know. So it was nothing personal, nothing personal at all. So when you're cold calling, I know that's kind of a crazy example, but you could be calling somebody who maybe they just lost their job and it's just the wrong time. Okay, so it's not personal, so you got to really watch out for that. Um, just kind of, you know, take it with a grain of salt and understand we're not, this is not about cold calling to be terrible. It's about cold calling to help, and we'll get into that right now. So let's break for a second and do a role play cold call, okay? I'm going to give you an objection. If you're cold calling me, we're going to throw in the virus as an objection and not being certain about what we're doing right now, okay? So let's pretend you cold call me, and we'll start from the uh, beginning. So you good with that, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so pretend you're calling me. I'll just go ring, ring, hello. Let's start it. Hi, um, would uh, Ms. Gillespie be there, please? Yep, this is her. And this is Mike calling from Keller Williams Real Estate. Mm -hmm. I have someone looking to purchase a house in your neighborhood, and I was wondering if you have any plans of selling your home in the future. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, we're in the middle of this whole coronavirus thing, so mm, we're not even certain what we're going to do this year, let alone what we're going to do next week. Okay, so let me let me ask you a question. If coronavirus wasn't in the picture, is selling something top of mind for you? Um, it was before all of this. To be honest with you, it was. We were really thinking about, hey, this is the year. The market's been great, all that kind of stuff. It's just right now, we really we don't even like. I don't even think it's a possibility. I mean, we're just like mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen. Right? The market could crash. I don't know. I, you know, before yeah. yes. For sure, but right now it's we're so confused, right? I understand. Probably uh, a lot of people feel as though it's a shame. Like up until 
up until a week ago, I would say this was the hottest market we've seen since 2017. Would you agree? Oh, it was such a good market. I feel like I feel like maybe we made a mistake. Maybe we didn't make a mistake. I don't know. It was a great market. Do you think it's going to rebound? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure. I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, what I do have in front of me right now are stats from last week. And if you look at Hamilton last week, we had 270 new listings hit the market, and 240 of those have already sold. You're kidding. Yeah, it's nuts. Like me, me personally, I sold three listings in the past week. Um, mm-hmm. Two of them sold over asking still. Um, I believe I still believe so strongly in this market that I personally listed and sold one of my own rental properties last week. Oh wow! So we, okay. We bought it in 2016 for 200, 225,000 and just sold it for 400. You oh my I'm gosh! Happy with okay. my decision to list. Hmm. That's pretty. That's that's a pretty impressive stat. But I think like <laughs> for us, we're not. We're just uncertain about it. So we're probably going to say, you know, circle back with us, you know, in a month or two maybe, but. Right now, I think we're just so I, we're gonna hunker down. I am finding I don't know if people are comfortable meeting or not. That's a decision mm-hmm. we all have to make for ourselves. But mm-hmm. like I, I booked an appointment off a cold call yesterday, and I'm I'm meeting with the person next week. Perfect. Um, okay. So so in that so I, case, I where would you go with this stats, group, though? So, so I would tell them the fact that you're still thinking about selling and stats indicate that you can sell your house for top dollar is exactly why we should meet. What works best for you? You can do Monday at 2 or Tuesday at 4. Perfect. And if you're okay. uncomfortable meeting, I'm more than happy to call you over Skype. Perfect. Okay. So so that's something interesting to go into there. So that's a really good one. Now, I'm going to ask you a question about your tonality. Okay. Somebody just texted me and asked me this question. Is this mm-hmm. the tonality you use on a cold call? Because your tone 100%. is very... 100%. Yeah. I okay. think that... So lots of people tell me my tonality is not what it should be. Yeah. But I think it helps me because I uh, I always... This is the way I talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> normally. And I see other people around me, especially new agents to our team, and mm-hmm. their voice swings up and down and up and down. Yep. And you, I think when you do that, you come across as a salesperson. Or if I come across the way I, I normally sound, I think the sense people get is that I'm here to help if you if you want my help or services, but I don't need you. Um, if you if you don't want to meet with me, I'm on to the next person. Yeah, um, 100% I agree. I think it shows a lack of, and my clients always give me this feedback, I, I never come across as desperate. And this is I'm, a really I'm good point. I'm playing the numbers game. Okay, so two things Mike just said that are really important. First thing is, is he plays a numbers game. Okay, the numbers game he disclosed at the beginning, so you can rewind this call and look at it. But the second thing is, is a lot of people ask me all the time about Mike and his cold calling skills about his tonality. And that's why I addressed it just 15 minutes into this call is because a lot of people have, like, like me, for example, that tonality that can be boom, boom, boom. When I'm doing my cold calling, it's the same as Mike. It's the exact same thing. I don't bring it into the crazy, crazy, like, you know, animated or anything like that. I'm like him. I'm very monotone-ish, very kind of calm, very, hey, I'm doing my job. It's conversational tonality. That's really what you're looking at is just to have a tonality that's very conversational based. So, and that's one of the biggest mistakes that we see in cold calling. When you're calling your database, that's the time you can be animated. When you're, you know, when you're doing other kinds of calls, that's the time you want to be animated. When you're doing cold calling, it's a very, very monotone, not not to the point where you're putting people asleep, but it shouldn't be something where you're in the middle of a, a, a serious pandemic right now. <laughs> you know, if you're calling, you're going, hey, how's it going? Woo! You know, like, what's happening? That's not going to fly in cold calling. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of FUs before you get anything positive. So I really, really want to stress that the tonality part of this is really important, okay? And if you notice, Mike is just having dialogue. I, it's nothing sexy here. There's nothing hidden that we're looking for here. It's really good dialogue. And some people are a little nervous <laughs> because they're thinking, if I cold call in this demographics or this time period – it may be a little bit sketchy, but we're going to cover that in a couple minutes. We're going to add a bunch more scripts to this, so give us a chance to do that. Um, let's take it into something else for a second. Auto dialer. Do you use one or not? Yes, Mojo. Okay. Are you triple dialing on Mojo or are you single dialing? Triple dialing. 
Okay. Um, can you explain to everybody what triple dialing is? Yeah. So basically, you use a software called Mojo. You map out the area you want to call. So I, I'm always calling pretty much the exact same area. Um, and then there are three phone lines going at a time. And the first person to pick up the call um, is the one you speak to. And say person number two picks up the call, I'm not actually going to be there. I have um, – it's a answering machine set up, and it just says, hello, hello, hello. Um, so it gives them the impression that the phone line isn't working. As soon as I get off my call with the person I'm speaking to, it flips to the second person and calls them right back. And then I just apologize. Hey, I tried to call you, but I wasn't able to hear you. And so that's something that he sets up in Mojo. So that's Mojo Dials, guys. Um, would you say, like, if somebody didn't have Mojo, how would they cold call? Is that even even a possibility? Uh, you could totally do it. Um, I know people that dial just using their phone. You can buy phone lists the same way we get them through Mojo. The mm -hmm. issue with it is you have to punch in the numbers. So to for me to call 100 people, it's going to take three to four hours. And if I was doing it by punching in the numbers, calling, not getting someone and doing it again and again and again, it would take me all week to speak to 100 people. It would. It would. And that's that's the downfall. But don't let that discourage you right now, guys. Like, it's really good. Like, Mike's being honest with the numbers. It's just that whole, if you're doing it manually, you know, maybe something that you want to try. And then, boom, you know, again, Mojo Dials is a very good one. And don't forget, 99% of you on this call need to scrub your list. And you can scrub through Mojo. Correct, Mike? You can. Yeah. Yeah. So there are that's, ways. To um, mm -hmm. That's one thing, I guess, that's making it a lot more challenging. A huge percent of the population is now on the do not call list. Mm -hmm. um, but I still, I find, even though we scrub, it hasn't really impacted my numbers that much. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't, because if it's scrubbing it, you're not calling people who are who haven't been on the list. So so that's mm -hmm. the other thing. You have to be careful, guys. If you're, you know, you have to abide your, your board rules. If your board rules don't want you calling people on the do not call list, which kind of makes sense, uh, but if, if you're not supposed to, then you need to have scrubbed lists. So if you're purchasing a calling list, make sure the list is scrubbed. Okay, that's a really big thing. Uh, the last thing we want is for you guys to be bothering people who have put themselves on the do not call list. A great script if you get somebody that said, that accidentally, just, just apologize. Just be honest with them and say, I'm so sorry. You know what? I will make sure that I put a note of this. And if you don't mind, I'm going to double check the list. And if you're not on it by chance, I will make sure you're on it. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Just apologize and move on. I am not a big fan of people who are cold calling and they just go, hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, a cold calls or you know, you're, I don't care if they're not on the do not call list. Listen, respect the do not call list. That's a huge thing. Okay, we're going to role play it's actually, again. It's we're a gonna, huge yeah. opportunity when you get someone on the do not call list. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, they're just getting slammed with calls constantly. So in Mojo, I can take them off my do not call list. Mm -hmm. But I find when I tell them that they're still very upset because they know the next realtor in town is going to call them. So I take their number, send it, tell them that I'm going to send it to the brokerage. And then the mm -hmm. brokerage sends a mass email out to everyone. And then at that point, they're actually removed. Um, ah. And when they hear that you're being proactive, more times than not, you build a relationship with them. And mm -hmm. they give you permission to put their info in the database and you can follow up with them going forward. 100%. That way they're, they're only mine. Totally agree. So it's a great opportunity. Again, guys, it's how your mindset sees things. If you're going to see this as a, oh, God, I don't want to make 300 calls, I will tell you, Mike's going to take 70 listings cold calling. Like, <laughs> and I've seen him do this. Not like there's proof that this actually that he is this good. And so what you're hearing is not about like this is not fluffy in the sense that you're thinking maybe um, is this all there is to it? Remember what he said a couple minutes ago and we'll touch on that later is it is a numbers game. That's what it is. It's a numbers game, and there's nothing wrong with it. It is a great form of lead generation. I want you to also remember that people are going to be home over the next couple of weeks, so we're going to move into scripting around purpose value and how you can help people when you're making the cold calls. So what's the biggest objection that you get when you're cold calling? What, do you, what is the biggest objection? The biggest one is probably just we're not interested. Um, and I... I don't know if this is right or wrong, but when someone tells me they're not interested, I I move on 
to the next person. I, I know that's a lot of agents around me. They'll get in these deep conversations with everyone they speak to. That's not my style. If you're not interested, end the conversation as soon as possible, move on to the next person and try and find that needle in the haystack that actually is interested. Great point. So again, guys, I, you, if you've coached with me, you hear me talk about this all the time. If you're not interested, if you're cold calling and somebody tells you respectfully that they're not interested, I hear a lot of scripting around it. And, you know, I may be massacred for saying this, but I do hear some scripting that says, oh, well, if you were to move, where would you move to? And then they try to carry on a conversation with somebody. And it's kind of, I'm a big proponent of please respect what somebody's saying on the phone. If they're telling you that they're not interested, then just move on. Okay, they're, they're just like Mike said, this is a numbers thing, you know, it's, it's just like any form of generating business. If I call some, you know, if I call somewhere and I'm, let's say I, let's say I own um, a meat shop, okay, a meat distribution shop, which there are like true local or something. And if I'm a meat shop and I call somebody and they're a vegetarian, um, you know, and they say, yeah, I'm a vegetarian, not interested. The last thing I'm going to do is say, well, if you weren't a vegetarian, what meat would you eat? Look, they're, <laughs> they're a vegetarian. Move on. So, so that's kind of I find how we a, look. Hmm. a true not interested will, will swear at you or blurt out of their mouth right away that they're not interested. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for pauses and trying to gauge whether or not people are interested or not. And if someone, so I call someone and ask them, do they want a home evaluation or they have plans on selling, on selling their house? Mm -hmm. If they pause for a minute, I know there's interest there. Um, even if they tell me afterwards they're not interested. And then I'll, I'll probe deeper. So what, um, what's a probing question that you'll ask then? Um, so if, it's, if I ask them the home, evaluate, home evaluation question um, and they pause and say, no, not right now, I'll ask them, well, is this something you'd be interested in the future? Um, okay, if you're interested in the future, when's a, when's a good time to call you back? Um, have you given thought to selling your home in the future? Is there a number that would entice you to sell your home? Those are and great probing questions that you just did. I've had people so tell me no and then have their house sold in an hour. It's just because <laughs> they tell you no doesn't mean no. I think that's great. And that's a really good point is that listen for the, the pause. So listen for the pause on the calls. If somebody calls and there's a pause, you know, like it's no different than any other industry. If I was in the fitness industry and I was calling around, I was like, all right, here's, you know, I'm in the fitness industry. Like right now, if I was in the fitness industry right now, which I'm not, I'm a, I'm a fit person, but I'm not in the fitness industry clearly. But if I was a personal trainer right now, I would be cold calling. I would be cold calling as much as I could. And if I was, and like think of this, if I'm a personal trainer right now, people are jonesing for some help. They're like, how do I do this? the number one opportunity for a personal trainer right now is to do video personal training. I'm shocked at how little personal trainers are doing that. Shocked. You know, this is one of the biggest opportunities. I train with some of the most impressive, you know, Ironman and triathletes all over, you know, my city. And we're all having the same conversation going, oh my God, like 16 hours of workouts a week and all of our fitness has been taken away from us. So we have to like kind of be all creative and stuff. It's a little too cold to bike outside. So we have to do different things. Our pools are all shut down. So a lot of us are jonesing and I'm going, wow, this is like an amazing opportunity. So if, if a personal trainer called me out of clear blue and said, and by the way, there's a 700 of you on this call. Do not give out my cell phone number to personal trainers, okay? Do not do that. <laughs> I'll come for you. I will send everybody after you guys. But anyway, so at the end of the day, if a personal trainer was to call me and say, hey, listen, you know what? Um, I'm a personal, local personal trainer. Have you ever thought of doing virtual personal training? I would pause for a moment, and then I would probably say, you know what? Now's really not the right time, or no, I really haven't. But I would secretly be kind of interested. So I wouldn't be offended if that personal trainer said, look, you had a little bit of a pause there. Can I just ask you a question about your fitness goals? Do you have any for 2020? And I actually would say to the personal trainer, yeah, I'm, I'm signed up to do a couple Ironmans that have not been canceled yet, so I don't really know what to do. And my training's been taken away. If that personal trainer can solve that problem for me, then I'm going to continue the conversation. So it's just the probing questions are what's really important that you're trained for those, that you really hear what Mike just said. Ask the probing questions. 
We covered a couple of them. Really good questions. I love it. Um, Mike, tell us, uh, cold calling, your best, I know it's different now because people are going to be home during the daytime and stuff. Let me ask you, best time that you've noticed to reach out to people? Is there days, times that you've seen a pattern that could be a little bit better? Mm, not, I try not to think about it, to be honest with you. It's, like, I'll go back to working out. I think the best time to work out is whenever you're actually going to do it. Um, I watched a video on, you know, a guy, Mark Wahlberg. Um, yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. He's everywhere. Yeah. Like, I mean, do yeah. I know so him? He, yeah. Everybody knows. Yeah. So I watched a video on him the other day. He wakes up at two 30 in the morning. And first thing he does is work out. That, that doesn't fit into my life. I work out at 6 a.m. every day. The other people that work out at 6 p.m. every day. Um, the main theme between those people is that they're all working out every single day. And I think the same thing applies with cold calling. Um, the best time is whenever you're going to do it and you're going to get it done. For me, that's exactly. the morning because all, all my distractions come in the afternoon. There's no way I could start this at noon and speak to a hundred people. It just wouldn't happen. So for me, I get started at eight thirty or nine and go until one, one, two o'clock. Do you cold call on weekends? Uh, yeah, I do. I do it uh, Saturday mornings at least two days a week, or two days a month, sorry. Okay. So Saturdays a couple of times. And I think Mike's point that he's making as well, guys, people are going to be home. Um, this is one of the most positive, like everybody I'm coaching, I'm telling the same thing. I'm like, guys, people are going to be home. This is, you know, answer rates are going to be higher. There's going to be some really cool stuff that we can be calling and talking about and doing with people. And I don't think people, again, remember, you could be calling people who are in really big distress. So you can't take that personally. That's why the monotone kind of calls is going to be a little bit better. But at the same token, you got to understand that people are, the first week it's not so bad. The second week you're at home, it's boring like i'm watching videos and our friends are all talking about it too they're going ah oh, you know today i was a chef with my family tomorrow i'm going to be holly hobby with my family great if you're cold calling people and we're going to get into this in a couple minutes maybe it's going to be look you're cold calling them because you're going to do you know be a realtor for a day how can we help you do you need a home evaluation like there's things that we could be doing and there's nothing wrong with it okay there's nothing wrong with it if you're going to stop your businesses because of this, then that, that actually is probably one of the worst things you can do. Lean in, be a little bit fearless about this, and just take it, like, be open to the surprise of what this could really be like. Okay, that's one of the biggest things that I'm trying to stress to people is you may be pleasantly surprised by this. Um, if I, you're I looking, find um, yeah. people, we get these misconceptions in our head that are, they're not based on any kind of fact. And, it's that kind of thinking that makes us very fearful. But when I look at it, like I spoke to 100 people yesterday. And mm. They're no more mean. They're no more angry. They're not nicer. They're, they're the exact same, given what's mm -hmm. going on. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think now, given what's going on, there's greater opportunity to build relationships and, and add value to them. Like I, I cold called someone yesterday. It's the person I have the appointment set with for next week. And... She, I sold her neighbor's house last year just by chance. She knows her neighbor. And what she said to me was, yeah, we want to sell our house, absolutely, but my main concern right now is getting food and going to the grocery store and we're running low on milk. That's something we're going to need to do. So I put in my database, go buy this lady milk and leave her a handwritten note. So that's something I'm doing today. Where normally I would never have that opportunity. Okay, I think what you just said is kind of cool. So so she says, and you'll hear me say different things about this, guys. You always have to be a little bit respectful, um, <laughs> meaning you can't do that with every client. But if Mike does 100, like remember that this is a great time to, like we talked at the beginning of the call, this is a great time to show that we actually, realtors, are really awesome. We're really amazing people. We're caring people. We're kind people. And there's nothing wrong. I've said this a hundred times. I was cold calling over the weekend, and one of the things that, you know, I got into a dialogue with somebody, they're like, oh, you don't feel bad cold calling or things like that or looking for business. I said, no, we're small business owners. And if anybody's reading the news, small business owners need to be working really hard 
at keeping their businesses going over the next 30 days. It's going to be the hardest time for us to do that. So if you're not willing to do that and you're going to let your fear of standing up for your companies and your business and your team members and your employees, you're not going to fight hard for them. That's a leadership thing. It's leadership. So get over yourself, get over your comfort zone, and push yourself to the next level. This is going to be that time where a lot of people are going to look back and go, I did epic shit. I did it. I fought for my team. I fought for my company. I helped the public. I really reached out to people. What Mike's doing um, from the call he got yesterday, that stuff that, you know what, he's not looking to post that all over social media that he's going to drop off a bag of milk for somebody. He's going to do it because that's that's part of him and who he is as a business owner. He's willing to say, hey, listen, I'm not just looking out for me building my business. Somebody who has a family is worried that they're going to run out of milk. I'm going to go. I'm going to get it. They didn't ask him to do it, and he's going to leave them a note. And whatever the universe throws in them afterwards, no problem. But that person will remember that he did more than just being a realtor. He was awesome at it. Now, I'm not recommending that you're calling people, asking them, to help them with things like that. He's having dialogue. He's having relationship conversations. He's moving his business forward, which is the reason why we're doing this call, is that, you know what? It's moving your companies forward. And nobody should be ticked off or holding themselves back because you are all business owners on this call, which means you guys really need to make the decision of how you want to lead your companies over the next 30 days. And this is why we're doing this call. So I love that you did that, Mike. And also, guys, Get in touch, you know, kind of listen to people. What is the biggest concerns that they're having? Are they worried about their houses? Like, listen to all that stuff and then start providing tools. You don't have to be the one running out getting milk and crackers and cookies for people. But if you're finding out that, you know, 60 people that you've talked to, you know, are all, you know, terrified because, you know, they ran out of bread in their area. Okay, well, find a resource for them and share it. Ask for their email and say, hey, listen, you just mentioned that you're a little concerned about milk you know what, why don't I grab your email and I'm happy to share that with a group that's running around, they're, they're offering grocery delivery services, would that work? Yeah, great, I'll email you the contact info. You do not always have to be the person who's gonna run out and do that. I personally can't, I, I really can't. I have a 75% uh, immune system, so I can't be out there doing stuff like that, but I'll tell you right now, no problem. I can, I can email 16 different people who will help that person. So it's really just about connecting as well, which is really good. Um, my favorite book for getting people lead generation inspired. We're just going to segue into that for two seconds before we do another scripting. Mm, I would say my, my favorite book of all time, it's one that really changed my life, was The Miracle Morning. And I, it's so important to me to have my set morning routine because I, what I do on a daily basis is very boring. So if I sit down and visualize it and picture myself getting through the calls with ease and booking appointments off the calls, it's almost like when I show up to work, I've already done this and I know what I'm expecting. I know what I'm getting into. I know how my day is going to flow. So for me, that's everything. And 100%. Everyone talks it's about really the good. miracle morning and putting that routine in place, but not a lot of people actually do it. Yeah, and I don't think, guys, if you've read The Miracle Morning, you don't have to put it all in place. Like, some of it is a little bit, kind of a little, you know, over there, and they're, you know, that's great. The whole concept of The Miracle Morning is to have a routine that can categorizes some really, some really good elements to your life. Like, at a time like this, are you doing a little bit of self-care? Are you still exercising? I noticed that as hard as it was yesterday for me to get out there and do a 10K, um, I noticed for sure I, I've fallen off of my routine completely. So I can, I'm no longer, I'm usually up at 4.30 in the morning. No longer, I'm going to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> so it's not working, you know, my regular routine. So I'm modifying it, but I'm still doing the concepts of a lot of different things. And, and to be honest with you, it's about balance looking at every area, having an app to meditate, you know, really getting outside and understanding this isn't locked down entirely. If you have a backyard, go out, sit in it, have your coffee outside and get some fresh air. There's some different things that you want to do. My favorite book, guys, for what we're talking about on the topic here is Go For No. It is a specific lead generation book called Go For No. And it really trains you guys that if you start looking at the no's that you're going to get when you're cold calling, you're going to have a really great opportunity 
to be like, okay, you know what? If I get 100 no's, there's a yes around the corner. So we, for me, it's an easy book. It was super easy to read, and I love the concept around go for now. Don't get discouraged over the no's. Get really positive about the no's because the more no's that you have, and if you're tracking how many no's you have, then you're going to get to the yeses. All no's add to the yeses. That's the game of cold calling. Cold calling is literally how many no's do I typically average out before I get a yes. If you're only focused on waiting for the yeses, then what's going to happen in cold calling is you're going to get really tied up going, oh, I'm discouraged. Not only is this boring, this sucks. I was just told that I was the most terrible person. Somebody wished that I got a virus and died. Like you're going to get all that kind of stuff and that's going to really drag you down. Start tracking your nose and looking at the ratio of nose versus your yes. If it takes 100 nose to get one yes, then get jacked about the nose. That's what the book's concept is all about. So as much as I love the other books, which are really good for your mentality, one of the best cold calling books out there, in my opinion, or even real estate lead generation books, is Go For No. And I really, really enjoy that. So that's one of my favorites. Um, when you're looking at closing scripts, let's look at that. Okay, so we're going to spend the next 20 minutes just really diving into some, some other stuff here about this. Closing scripts. Um, do you have a closing line that you use typically? Um, I know I do, but I'd like to hear if you have one. So I guess I, I have a closing mentality. So my my thought process, like when you first started coaching me, I would make follow-up calls and cold calls just for the sake of doing them. Now the mentality is I need to drive Mike's body through their door one way or another, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get in their door. Um, so for me, I find, let's go back to your point about why people don't cold call. It's because there's no immediate gratification. 99 times out of 100, you're not going to book an appointment, go in and sell their house right away. You're going to add them right. to the database and follow up with them. Um, right. And eventually you, you will get them if you're persistent. Yep. Um, so I, when I have a call with someone, say they tell me that they're planning on selling their house in six months. I will ask them, is it okay if I touch base with you in six months' time? Um, they'll normally tell me yes. Even though, even though in this moment I'm probably bothering them, six months is so long down the road, they'll, they'll tell me yes, call me in six months just to get me off the phone today. Right. Um, but before I hang up that call, I'll ask them, so in six months' time when I call you, can you make a commitment to me that you'll let me come and meet with you? So I can let you know what your house is worth and shake your hand and see if we're a good fit to work together. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so far away, they'll always say yes to that. And then I, I don't call them in six months. I'll chop that in two and call them in three months and just remind them that when I spoke to them three months ago, they made a commitment to me that in another three months, I get to go and meet them and shake their hand and introduce myself. Perfect. And I'll remind them who I am, what my name is, what company I work for. And then when I call them in six months' time, it's very hard for them to tell me no, I can't come through because they've made a commitment to me twice. Perfect. Um, so follow-up, guys, what you're hearing on that is follow-up is really, really important. If you're expecting instant gratification from this, no. So I want to kind of go into this for a second, then we're going to do some role-playing and some scripting around how we change it in this kind of environment. A couple of things I want you guys to realize. When you're looking at cold calling, as Mike said, it's not an instant gratification process. You're going to have to have a, a system in place to follow up. So either you're using Follow Up Boss or an Excel sheet, whatever. Just make sure that you have that available to you, that you have something where you're tracking your follow up. The other thing you want to remember is, is that this is, cold calling is that follow up game, but it's not because it is an instant gratification. You have to kind of realize, again, that the no's are going to be huge. What we're doing to modify some different things, you know, again, for our closing scripts, I should go back to that for a second. Mike's not really doing anything different with his closing. He's really just gauging the follow-ups and things like that. One of the things you have to remember about closing is, is that the more solidified you are with scripting, and this is another thing about this, if you're going to cold call or if you're going to be, you know, reaching out, and I, the word cold call is just, yeah, it's got some stigmas behind it, so I really hate saying it so much. But if you're going to cold call, write out your script, put it in front of you, and make sure you've internalized it. A lot of the reasons why people aren't successful with cold calling is they haven't internalized a script. 
you haven't memorized it. If you want to memorize it, do it 100 times out loud, have it written in front of you 100 times out loud by yourself as often as, you know, that 100 times, take a bunch of noodles, craft macaroni box, and then read it out loud 100 times. Your brain will internalize the script. The more natural you sound on the phone, the more natural it's going to be a conversation. So when I'm cold calling, it's never usually changing. It is changing in this day and time because the scripting does have to, in my opinion, be modified a little. We have to be very cautious about what we're saying on the phone. It's not the same as before. Um, but remember a few things. Your call ratio should be much higher at this time. So meaning if everybody's at home, your call ratio will be larger. So it's going to be a great time to call and check in with people. The second thing, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So whether or not people believe the pandemic is huge or whether they don't, that's not my business, okay? It's none of my business. Um, one of the things I know is that most of us are socially isolated and most of us are sitting at home right now. So what script have you modified at all, by the way, Mike, your scripting based on what you're hearing in today, what's happening today? Has it been modified? Yes or no? No. Okay. Um, so we're just going to keep that back. Here's, here's my take on it. The, the initial script is only to start a dialogue. Um, and then as soon as that dialogue, because I'm, I'm basically just asking them at any point in the future, do you have plans to sell your house? Um, that could be five years down the road. It could be two months, three months. Um, and then from there, it gives me the opportunity to talk to them. Did you notice yesterday that anybody in your 100 uh, contacts, did you notice yesterday anybody said to you something different because of what we're going through right now when you use that script? Um, not, not really. So nobody was pissed off at you and said, holy smokes, we're going through a no. pandemic. can't believe you're calling no. us, asking us if we're going to sell this year. I, if you want me to be totally honest with you, no. Yeah, no, I, I don't I want you to lie. I added my two people to the database, and I I booked an appointment off of it. Okay, so you guys just my heard follow up that. calls too. I, yeah. I I think it's courteous to offer them a different option. Um, maybe that virtual Skype calls or WhatsApp calls, or for older people that don't have computers, maybe it's just a phone call. Um, but if, if they're willing to let me in the house, I'm still going to go. That's a choice I've made. That's the choice Mike's making. Just to be clear, nobody has to do that. Okay, that's Mike's choice. Now, understand Mike's city is under different quarantine laws than some of the other cities, so you have to respect that at this time. It depends on the customer um, customer's demographic of where they are. Some of you guys can't because you're actually on full lockdown right now on this call, and some of you can't. What I want you to remember about this, and we'll, we're going to cover this in a second as well, is that it's this time period as business owners over the next little while, two to three weeks, your goal is to find the people for when this balances out. There's tons of people, if you study this over and over again, there are going to be tons of people who have to buy, have to sell. Uh, a couple of days ago, the military sent out an email saying, um, and you know, a lot of our clients are in different areas. Um, so one of my clients was telling me that they sent out a delay of relocations, HHT trips for three weeks. Okay, well, that's great. They didn't say that the HHT trips are canceled. They didn't say that they are no longer going to be relocated as military. They're going to shut down. They're not going to relocate people. That is thousands of people in our military that are relocated in 2020, and we're entering peak relocation season. What they've said is it's postponed a few weeks. That's what they've said. Okay, maybe it'll be postponed maybe two months. Who knows? But the truth is, is that they haven't said that they're not going anywhere. All these people will have intentions of moving. So my question always comes down to is that what do you think is going to happen in 60 to 90 days from now? The interest rates are going to be amazing. Things are like, I don't know if it's 60 to 90 days. Please do not like go out there and say that I've predicted that. This is not something. This is an unpredictable territory. But I can tell you is that if you study past times that this has happened, if you go back to H1N1 back in 2009, you can see different things that happen. And you can start looking and saying, okay, the economy is going to be really poured into. There's going to be a lot of help out there. They're already saying people aren't going to lose their home because they're willing to defer mortgages for six months. There's a lot of people who are going to have to spend three weeks with their families in their houses, and they may go, gosh, this house really is too small. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to make it out of this okay, and there's a lot who won't. So 
So there is going to be a massive need for real estate. So the, re the reason why we're having this call is to say, please understand that it is okay and it is really important over the next few weeks to look at different lead generation sources and say, what am I doing to find the opportunities to help people three, four, five weeks from now or two months from now, it's not over. Got to find those people now, they're at home. There's nothing wrong with this. So we've pivoted into virtual CMAs and we're coaching a lot of our clients to go virtual CMAs because I personally, like I said to you earlier, I don't believe in doing um, the open houses. I believe in social uh, distancing at a very high level. So I'm about a four or five on that one out of five where uh, my immune system is compromised so I can't be out there all the time doing things like that. So I'm very cautious about that. But I also believe unless they're going to list their house in this time period, there's no reason for me to physically go there. I can do it virtually. And that's a question I'm asking on cold calling. So when I've got somebody on the phone and they're saying, yeah, you know, I'd love an evaluation. Are you coming in person? My question is very simple. Are you interested at all at putting it on the market at this time? If they're not, then there's no reason for you to go there. Okay, use Zoom, use, use uh, Google, use it, Facebook, anything that you can. I prefer using Zoom. So just offer to send them a Zoom link, get out there, send them the Zoom link and have fun with it. So when we're doing our cold calling, it's no different, you know, Mike hasn't changed the script. Our scripting's modified just a little bit where we're calling and we're just addressing the monkey in the room or the elephant in the room quite easily. So Mike's script kind of just goes right into it. When we're cold calling, we're just going, hey, it's Marianne Gillespie calling, listen, local realtor, and we know everybody's at home right now, kind of wondering what they can do. So we're calling around to see if anybody had plans to sell in 2020, this is a great time for us to do a virtual CMA with you and your family. Is that something you're interested in? That's what we're saying. So I, I, Mike's script is great because he's not changing. And yesterday he did 100 calls, booked one appointment for a listing appointment. He had two follow, uh, three ads to his database and two follow-ups. So Mike's getting success using his script. We're getting success using our script with our clients. It's no different. Pick the script that works for you. If you're a little bit softer, kind of like how you know mine is, it's just addressing the monkey in the room. Hey, you guys are, you know what? We're reaching out, we're local realtors and we're reaching out because a lot of people had plans to move this year. So we're offering virtual home pricing and CMAs. Is that something you're interested in? Remember what we said at the beginning of the call. If they say no and it's a sharp, no, not interested, perfect, move on. See you later. Okay, thank you so much, really appreciate that. You know anybody who, who would? Simple as that. There's a lot of people who need help right now. So that's the scripting that we're using around it. And it's really, nobody's gotten mad at us, nobody. So, and we've coached a lot of clients on this and they're getting the appointment. Now, what do I mean by virtual CMA guys? Starting next week, we're gonna really show you guys how to do them. But the reality is, is that virtual CMA means that it's about a 30 minute appointment. You can have an appointment calendar and that's what I would suggest you have. There's a lot of free appointment calendar apps and things like that, super easy. Um, where you can actually just send the link to, your, to whoever you're on the phone and say, hey, what's your email address then? And what I'll do is I'll send you my calendar link, book your 30 minute virtual CMA and the instructions will come. Perfect, get them in there. They're okay with it. And I think it's the coolest thing ever to be on the phone right now calling people saying, hey, if they're worried that the market's doing something wonky, have your stats since Friday the 13th to today. Um, Gosh, that's ominous. But anyway, so, so from Friday the 13th to today, if you look at the six day snapshot of the market, most market snapshots have positive news. Okay, so it's very rare that I've heard that they're negative. So they've had some positive reviews. Showings are down. However, just remember this next two to three week time period, the more virtual CMAs you can do or CMA leads that you can find is going to really make an impact for your teams and companies in the next few months. What you do now, if you're sitting around saying, I don't like cold calling because it's super boring or I've got a fear that somebody's going to yell at me, get over it. Mike just proved to you, nobody's doing anything different. His script is much more direct. Mine is a little softer just in the sense, like I said, we're offering something very specific, okay? What Mike's really looking for is not too different than what we're looking for, just two different options in the scripting. That's the number one thing that you gotta really think about is can you really go to that point where you're leaving all your kind of stories that you create in your head and saying, I'm gonna jump into something. 
okay, I'm going to really do something. And those of you who have teams, arrange it and be like, okay, here's some creative fun. Get your whole team on Zoom. They're all at home. Mute Zoom so you guys don't hear each other because <laughs> that would just be weird and chaotic. But get everybody on Zoom and show the whole team and say, okay, we're going to do two hours of dialing for dollars and get the list out, get everybody excited and be like, all right, team, here we go. And whoever have a contest and be like, whoever gets the first CMA, uh, virtual CMA book, you know, we're going to shoot you off a $10 Starbucks thing or $5 Starbucks thing, or you're just going to really get acknowledged like you're rock star on the team. So now if you're sitting here on this call and you're going, I don't have a team. Great. If you're an owner of a brokerage, get your brokerage to do dialing for dollars for two hours virtually. Come on, like do it, you know, have some fun around it. If you're not part of a team and you don't own a brokerage, great. Find three agents who are as excited and motivated as you are to not sit around and do nothing and say, let's do this. Let's get a Zoom or let's do FaceTime or whatever we have to do, mute ourselves and let's hold each other accountable to two hours of cold calling today. It's really important that you guys get over those barriers and just go, look, it's simple. Have a, you don't want to be the person who calls and is like, yeah, yeah, hello, you know, and <laughs> that's not the right time for this. But there are tons of people who need home evaluations right now, who need some positive news about the real estate market. Um, when I was out running, um, I was talking and texting with my running group, and they were all saying, hey, what's the market doing? What's the market doing? So I gave them our market stats, and instantly they were like, what? And I said, yeah. I said, what did you think was going on with the market? And they were like, I thought the market was crashing. And I'm like, where did you hear the real estate market was crashing? The stock market, yes. I'm feeling that pain. Why am I ever feeling that pain? But the market isn't crashing. I'm like, it's not crashing. I mean, I don't, I don't see any signs of it crashing. Will it crash? I don't know. Who knows? But I can tell you one thing is that I can tell you the stats since, since this was announced in our country as of Thursday and Friday. And it's pretty positive. Mike, do you have any great words for people um, who are thinking about doing this and you know, maybe needed a little bit of inspiration? What can you share? So the way I've always looked at it, I would say, I can do this now that I've built my business off of cold calling, but I, I've calculated how much money I make per person I speak to over the course of a year. Um, because sometimes you'll go for two weeks and you'll strike out and you'll get absolutely nothing and you'll get discouraged. Um, but if I have that number in my head, which is about five fifty, so five dollars and fifty cents per person I speak to. Um, I'm not getting my 550 from every single person, but it averages out over the course of a year. And it has always averaged out since I got into business. Mm -hmm. So I, every person I speak to, I just I view them as giving me $5.50. And putting it so in what Mike's talking about is he takes his annual income and he basically looks at his call answer ratio and says, okay, every person that answers the phone is worth about 550 so that's kind of how he gets through the boredom and the two weeks of getting nothing. You got to remember that, guys. That is great advice. How does it work in your head to kind of get through the mundane and the, the kind of hardest thing? Um, so that's great advice, Mike. I really appreciate that. How I get through it is not really any different. I use the go for no philosophy. I look at the no's and I'm like, it's no problem. Now, will I tell you, are we seeing a lot more people who are wanting virtual CMAs right now? Yes. There's a lot, um, and we're having some fun with it, okay? We're talking to people and going, hey, you know what? Uh, this is something we're offering. If you've been thinking of selling your house this year, we don't want you to stop. We know how important it is for you guys to get updated pricing. Is there, you know, can we book you in on one? And we're seeing some of our teams that we're coaching are actually doing anywhere about 10 per agent per day. So they're really having some great, you know, success with that because there are a ton of people who um, really do need our help and there's a ton of salespeople who are not helping. So if I was thinking of selling my house in 2020, ask yourself the question, if you guys were, and I was, whatever the case is, would you be, a, would you be interested in a virtual CMA to just give you some peace of mind? Would you want to talk to a real estate agent, you know, on the phone who can tell you what the stats of the market were since Friday? We can't predict the future. We cannot do that. You can look at history, and history will give you a good indicator of the future, but the reality is is that most people, and, and trust me, look at your board. Look at your board from 2018, let's say, or 2019, sorry. Look at your board from 2019 
and take a look at how many sales occurred, how many listings were in your board for the year of 2019. What I look at is I go, if by chance, okay, we didn't know all this was gonna happen. So if there was, let's say, 5,000 listings that were that happened, okay, in 2019, which would be low, but if there was 5,000 listings that happened in 2019, then guess what? I need to find all those people. We're only a few months, two and a half months into the year. I'm going to find all those people because when you get to the other side of what's happening right now, I will tell you from my own coaching experience, the people who are finding the CMA opportunities or the listing appointment opportunities, whether they're now virtually or whether it's for the future, you're building a great database of future business. And that is what you need to get positive about. You will not have instant gratification if you're looking and saying, I'm going to cold call and I'm going to make, you know, a ton of business happen right now on it. It's probably not going to happen. You have to accept the fact that this is future business building mode. And that's what makes it really exciting. So I'm very, very jacked about that. So, Mike, I want to just want to say thank you. I appreciate this call more than anything. Um, this is really good. And I want to also let you guys know that we're going to start implementing next week some accountability uh, sessions. I'm going, I haven't spoken to Mike about this yet, but we're going to have some accountability sessions. We're going to say, okay, you know, who wants some accountability to cold calling? Here's our schedule. Here's when we're doing it. And you know what? Embrace it, guys. Like, really embrace it. There's a massive opportunity here for us to really stand up for our businesses, really look out for other people. And just remember, this is very much about helping all the people who thought that they were going to sell in 2020 who are a little bit concerned about what's happening. You're looking for those people. Mike was able to find one yesterday. So it's not, it's not obsolete. So really just take it, take advantage of the fact that we have the ability to drive business doing things virtually. And remember, we're building for this when it's done. And, it, and honestly, that's the good thing about this. So, Mike, I just want to say thank you very much. I greatly appreciate this call. I think there was a lot of amazing nuggets in here. And, um, and I'll reach out to you probably over the weekend and see what we can do about some accountability things for everybody in cold calling for next week. Sound good? Awesome. Yeah. No, it sounds really good. Thank you so much. Amazing. I love it. Okay. And guys, we'll post this call on the Facebook site. So if you need to re-listen to it, go there. And if you have any cold calling questions, Mike Johnson, for the MRN team, easy to find. Um, you can look him up, his pictures on our advertising, all that kind of stuff. And honestly, reach out to him. Just respect that we're all working really hard right now. So we're a little slower on response times. But Mike, thank you for your time. And everybody go out and crush, crush it and reach out if you need any help. Sound good? Perfect. Good. Thanks, Mike. Awesome. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.